This, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Program is rated MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Finally, show with the balls to call it like it is. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Countdown to audio torture. The Rated R Safety Show starts in three, two, one. Ah, let the eardrum pain begin. Forget the corporate bullshit. This is the Rated R Safety Show with your host, Dr. Uh, it doesn't matter who the host is. Well, hello and welcome to an all new Rated R Safety Show. Today's Monday, February the 3rd of 2020. It is day 34 of the year and only 332 more days remaining. Yes, that is important. Anywho, how's everybody out there today? Are you having your Super Bowl hangover? Did you stay up late last night as the Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers duked it out on the field? Well, good for you if you did. Hopefully you're not too tired today because that's important. Anyways, I have to tell you here... I did not watch the Super Bowl, any of it, not an ad, not the halftime show, not anything. And I can't tell you 100% the reason why. It wasn't like I had much going on last night. It was just something I just wasn't interested in. But hey, that's me, not you. Hopefully you did enjoy your time. Get to participate with some other people watching the show of shows. Have you seen any of the craziness going on in our little multiverse here on the internet with the different things surrounding this good old world of ours of safety? I always find it interesting how some new podcasts are popping around and popping out. It's a good thing. I like to see more people talking about our subject matter here of safety. But it seems like we have a lot of days of the week they get extremely crowded with a lot of episodes. And I think that we're, we're kind of guilty of the same thing. But hey, whatever. It is what it is. But there's a lot of content available to you. And there's a different perspectives that people like to give you on what they see. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're trying to share some safety podcast. There is a plethora of them available out there. Different industries, different fields, different point of views, different people inside of your organization that it addresses to. So if you haven't found any, come here. We'll help you out. Try to assist you in the journey of finding the podcast world of different podcasts. But anyways, that's not why you're here. So let's talk about the main reason why you're here. And let's talk about the news. More sarcasm than a Mortal Kombat beatdown. Rated R Safety Show. Are you you, you you tired of actually going to a safety event and it's extremely boring? Well, let's go ahead and change that moving forward. Reach out to our team here at Safety Focus Moment. And let us make your next event extraordinary. We can provide you anything from guest speakers to full-blown workshops. To find out more information, go to safetyfocusmoment.com. That's safetyfocusmoment.com. And don't forget to tell them that you heard it here on Safety FM. Here is the news on the Rising Our Safety Show. So unless you've been locked up under a rock or covered by a rock, how the hell does that saying go? Shit, I never remember. Anyways, Iowa caucuses are tonight. The first contest to help determine the Democratic nominee for president. New Hampshire will note next Tuesday, February the 11th. I know we normally don't talk about politics, but it is something that is happening in the world of news. So I figured we did need to bring it up today. So now you know, just in case you didn't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens tonight. Duh. 
As already mentioned at the top here, Kansas City Chiefs beat the San Francisco 49ers 31-20 to on Sunday's night Super Bowl. The Chiefs clocked three touchdowns in the last six minutes of play to take the, dec- the decisive lead. It was Kansas City's first Super Bowl appearance since 1969. Oh, yeah. So did you enjoy that show? Did you watch the game? Did you have some fun? Did you make it to work on time today? I know, all crucial things there. Here's part of the things that are going on in China. We've been discussing it here off and on. We've been talking about China for a long period of time, but here's another thing going on there. The Chinese government has banned funerals for those who died from the coronavirus outbreak. Official guidelines call for immediate cremation to avoid the further spread of the disease. More than 300 now have died in China and nearly 15,000 cases have been confirmed there. So, I don't know. If you take a look and take a deep dive into some of the research on what's going on, some people are saying that this is a being overhyped by the media. I don't know. I'm just sharing with you what I can find. I read the information that I find available to share with you. You need to make a determination from there. Anyways, you're going to like this. The FDA has approved the first peanut allergy drug for patients aged between 4 and 17 years old. While it doesn't empower users to fully enjoy peanut products, it helps protect against accidental exposure by providing a small amount of peanut with every dose. Slowly and more safely than building tolerance. Or building tolerance, I guess, more safely. So, I don't know. I think that the target market there is kind of interesting. Because what if I want to enjoy some peanuts as an older person? Well, this is targeted to 4 to 17-year-olds. So, let's say that this is targeted to children. Well, that means I can't enjoy the peanuts. And I am saying peanuts just in case. Duh. Interesting, right? Let's continue. Spray planes have been deployed in Kenya to combat the worst locust swarm in 70 years. The United Nations says the cost contains the outbreak will exceed, are you ready for this, $70 million before it spreads to nearby countries. $70 million to control the locusts. I swear the more news stories that I read, it sounds like a bad episode of Resident Evil. If you're not familiar with the game or the movies, look it up. Especially between the coronavirus, now this locust outbreak, just getting interesting. If you're here in the U.S., Ponxatani Field predicts an early spring. Organizers of the Groundhog event said that he predicted an early spring only 21 times over the last 100 years. So it's a rarity. Ironically, the Pennsylvania town got a light dusting of snow before the ceremony. Huh. Poxitani Phil. If you're not familiar with Poxitani Phil, go look up this older movie that's called Groundhog's Day with Bill Murray. It's quite fantastic. I love it. Just imagine Memento, because you might be a little bit more familiar with that one, even though that's still an older movie, but a comedy. Anyways, Here's an interesting twist. Border officials ceased $123 million worth of comfort. Oh, I can't even speak. Counterfeit unlicensed Super Bowl merchandise last week, including jerseys, hats, jewelry, and thousands of other items. In a statement, Homeland Security Intellectual Property Protection Division chief said that they were committed to ensuring Super Bowl 54 is not compromised by transactional criminal networks exploring fan enthusiasm for illicit profits. He added that fans deserve to have authentic, high-quality merchandise from the teams they support. Well, well, well. High-quality merchandise. Not that counterfeit shit. I don't know. What about the shit that settles on the side of the road? Sometimes I think that that's counterfeit. But what do I know? I'm not a sports aficionado. I don't know anything about this stuff. I just look at the stuff that's there. And if you want authentic, isn't that like two, three hundred fucking dollars? I don't know. Something else to think about. 
A 20-year-old man wearing a fake suicide vest stabbed three people in South London on Sunday before the police shot and killed him. The attacker was sentenced to three years in jail in 2018 for terror offenses. The Sun reports, but he was released early due to London's mandatory early release policy. So I don't know. I I don't know. I'm lost. I look at these things and we talk about them and I read them and I address them and I go back and forth and I go, hey, is this the right direction? Is this the right thing? that takes place of letting people out early. Especially if we don't know if the sentence solved some of the problems. I don't know. I'm just saying to say, just talking to talk. So, just so you know. Duh. An estimated 2.2 million electric vehicles were sold in 2019. I think that's great until you hear this part. A meager 2.5% of global market. All electric dominated 74% of the market while plug-in hybrids sales decreased. The Tesla Model 3 was the most popular worldwide, selling just over 300,000 units. Kind of knew automatically that when that car came out, that that car was going to be a very popular electric vehicle because the price point that Tesla put on the thing Most people in the market could afford it. I don't think most people could afford a $90,000 car for the Model S. Now, they might have dropped a little bit in price. And the Model X is kind of up there, too. And then, of course, the Cybertruck is about to come out. And then the Roadster, we don't even need to talk about it because we already know that it's more expensive than the other vehicles. And I'm not saying they're not quality cars. But you have to kind of look at it. Some of those fossil fuel cars that are not good for the environment, so let me make sure that we reference that, are much cheaper than the electric vehicles. But then you have to look at maintenance and value added and all that other horse shit before you can really make that true determination. So what do you think? Is this a vehicle that you would consider. Would you consider an electric vehicle? Not a plug-in, not a hybrid plug-in. I'm talking about a full electric. Give it some thought. You never know. Oh, by the way, did you see last night too that Hummer, I guess they ran an ad during the Super Bowl, is coming out with an electric vehicle. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes up there. Specifically, if it looks like the older style Hummer, or what the hell it looks like. I'll tell you, I would love to have a Hummer 1 Series 1, but they are some monsters there. Anyways, Google has released the most searched Super Bowl party recipes by state over the last week. In Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York, Massachusetts, chili was the top dish. In Illinois, the big search was for Philly cheesesteaks. New Jersey, Connecticut, and Virginia folks wanted buffalo chicken dip recipes, while coastal states, Maryland and South Carolina, had a taste for crab dip. Interesting. Now, I'm going to read this news story, share it with you, and it's just for the purpose of sharing it, just so you know on what occurred last evening. President Trump and billionaire Michael Bloomberg are having at it. The day before both aired a $10 million ads during the Super Bowl, Trump hit Bloomberg for being a very short individual, tweeting that Minnie Mike asked for a box to stand on during the next Democratic debate. The president is lying, Bloomberg's campaign said in response, adding that Trump is a pathological liar. Last week, the DNC announced new qualifications that make Bloomberg a contender to participate. Not going much deeper on that one, just sharing the information. Now you know on about all those millions of dollars that were spent last night on ads politically during the Super Bowl. Okay, no winner for Friday night's Mega Million Drawing. Tuesday's drawing will be for a $168 million jackpot or a $118.8 million cash payout. No winner for Saturday night's Powerball Drawing. Wednesday's drawing will be for a $50 million jackpot or $35.8 million cash payout. I don't believe that anybody's actually come forward in regards to the mega payout that happened last week with a Florida person. Be interested to see when that happens. Anyways, we're going to give you the top 
five movies from the box office that occurred over the weekend. The Gentleman pulled in $6.1 million. That's down from the number four spot. Gretel and Hansel, $6.1 million. And that's new to the theater this week. And then Dr. Doolittle, or Doolittle in this case, $7.7 million, stated number three. 1917, $9.6 million, stated number two. And then here we go. Bad Boys for Life, $17.6 million, stated number one. I guess people still love the franchise. You know, Will Smith will do that to you. And Martin Lawrence. I mean, come on. You didn't think I was going to leave him out, did you? Anyways, let's go over the days of the year that you can celebrate today. Taking it from the top, American Painters Day. Doggy Date Night. That sounds weird. Elmo's Birthday. Four Chaplains Memorial Day. National Cordova Iceworm Day. Another strange one. International Golden Retriever Day, National Football Hangover Day, go figure, National Carrot Cake Day, need to celebrate that one for sure, National Patient Recognition Day, National Missing Persons Day, National Wedding Ring Day, National Women Physicians Day, The Day the Music Died, and Take a Cruise Day. Wow, those are some pretty interesting ones that you can actually do all together. Imagine if you combined them all and made it into one giant thing. It could be interesting. Anyways, like always, I appreciate you listening to the Rated R Safety Show. I know who you are. You know who I am. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Duh. The more you listen, the more we get into your head. Safety FM. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen.